side imaging in that and you can play around with that with the sucker metal but for me it's the old school looking right at the weeds looking at the metal you might ask how can a fish come that close to the boat but after having caught a fish before and re-rigging a minnow in the water and washing off my hands I've literally hand fed muskies right at the boat they get so fixated like a dog and a bone on these minnows that they will come right next to the boat and not even notice you so that's why I'm not afraid to run the bait five feet behind the motor at times real windy like it is today, it's easier to keep your bait right in position instead of letting it swing all over and half the time you're cleaning off weeds if you let it go out too far. And I also always let the one on the outside go further out because there's more room for error as it swings back and forth when it's, on, when it's starting on the outside. Plop them out, we're ready to go. Now I'm only going to cast a few areas today because with this, with this wind out and this weight line still getting free. Really focus on precision focus, focus, you know. Getting chased, getting chased, big musky. That was a beauty. That was a big musky. If we get that one, we're gonna be doing really good. That's a big, big girl. Alright, we know there's a big musky back there about 25, 30 yards. Instead of waiting and coming back later, I'm going to do one great big grand circle with the minnows in the water. Big wide circle and come right back through at the same angle I just did. Oh, big musky. You ate the bobber. So you got the minnow. That's myself. And he let go of it. And I think the fish ate the bobber. He just took it down until he popped it and then he let it go. All right, we're gonna go back through there. That fish is hot, so we're hoping to hook it. I've been doing this a lot of years, and I, I can't remember the balloon being popped by getting eaten. We popped it with, purposely popping it to have no pressure when they're going down with it. Like that, but the musky do it. Oh, there he is, gone, the other one's gone. We get over the top of him, and I'm gonna try and one hand this whole thing. Drift right over the top of him, and I'm gonna net him before he spits it. Straight down here. There we go. Got him. Big fish. Stay on there, buddy. Damn, I think she's hooked. Oh, God. Oh, one arm. <laughs> Came back and she is hooked. Wow, this is sweet. You can do it. Oh, she's in the net. All's well. Beautiful big fat one. Look at that guy. <laughs> I love it. Now that's a beautiful musky. First cold front of the year. Get her back. November. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> a lot of power. Well, I proved you can do it by yourself. 
I've, we've been doing that for years, but that fish ate a bobber first. It, the balloon bobber, it ate this, punctured it. Circle back, we knew the fish was hot. Ate the minnow, awesome deal. did to my harness broke the thing was so powerful busted the hook split the hook in half so I'm probably a little closer wow all right what a deal in summation I had two fish early let's see one one good but one good follow one hit and I had another one chasing the middle and I patiently waited until we got into the major and I went over to the windy part of the lake in a spot I knew I had to check and it was the first Nice musky. I assume it's the first one we got. Was chasing the minnow, misses the minnow, and then comes back and he sees the minnow and the bobber. And from what I could see, he went after the bobber instead of the minnow, which was a balloon. And he grabbed it, brought it down until he popped it, then came back up. But of course, I couldn't get the minnow to float. So I'm just dragging the minnow around. <laughs> we circled back, put on another bobber, he came back and hit it. That was the first one, a beautiful 43 incher. And then lo and behold, there was another one right behind it. We circled back in the same exact area, came through, and, the, and then the great big 30 pounder was there. So it was a, a really great deal. And I want, I'm out here alone because my clients rescheduled for today. So every now and then I get to have all the fun in the boat. And um, we've got a lot of bad weather coming in tomorrow. I'm hoping I can sneak out again. I'm not sure if I'm, the clients are going to reschedule for tomorrow, too. It looks like about half the day is going to rain, but prefrontal conditions, big cold front came this week. Water temps are going down a degree or two each night and the fish are going. The clarity is so good right now and the fish are seeing everything we're throwing at them. And even a week ago you couldn't see more than a foot and now you can see it down five, six feet. So that cl that water clarity change coupled with the water temperatures going down made all the difference in this week's success. 